Their women are very good in high school, then they go to college, they're very good in college. They nail their damn grades, they do their studying, they get their A's and they, and they ace their LSATs so they're smart too. Then they go off to do their articling and they're really, really good at it. And then they get offered an associate position and they're really, really good at it. And then by the time they're 30 they make partner and let's say they're in high pressure, high paying jobs. $250,000 a year, $300,000 a year, $500 an hour. Okay, what's your life like? You work all the time, period. 70 hours a week, 75 hours a week, flat out. And you don't get to make any mistakes. And if your client calls you at 3 in the morning on, Monday, on Sunday, you say, I'm really glad to hear you, hear from you, because if you don't, there's some hot law firm in New York that'll take your client from you at a moment's notice. And the client is paying you, whatever, the firm, $750 an hour, of which maybe you get $350, and what they want is an answer about something really complicated, right bloody now. And you can say all you want about the fact that women have a difficult time with that because it's a male-dominant patriarchy. Any, any female lawyer who's hit 30 and is a partner that has any sense at all knows that's complete bloody rubbish. It's market determined right to the core. What happens to the women when they're in their 30s? They all leave the high-end law firms. Why? Because who in their right mind would want to live like that? That's the issue, right? Once you make about $60,000 a year for your family, but let's say for you personally, additional income makes zero, has zero impact on your quality of life. Zero. So why work 80 hours a week? Well, men will do it. Some men. Very few. A handful of hyper-competitive men who are obsessed with hitting the pinnacle of the given dominance hierarchy they're in will happily work 80 hours a week and they'll forego everything else relationships, family, children way in the second category and so those men are often very difficult to live with too because they're so obsessed with their career it's hard to have a relationship with them and maybe they don't have much of a relationship with their kids but they're damn good at what they do and part of that is, is they're smart and disciplined and they'll work non-stop all the time it's like an obsession and that's the sort of people who run things those are the people who run things well they're often also disagreeable too because you want to you want to manage people really they're not going to like you you know and it's not an easy thing to not be liked and actually if you're an agreeable person and women are more agreeable than men it's quite painful to be disliked but if you're in a managerial and executive position, the probability that people are going to like you is quite low. Now, if you're a real son of a bitch, then they're going to dislike you more. But it's, it's, those, those positions are very stressful, partly because of the interpersonal dynamics, and they're also incredibly, incredibly competitive. So the women hit that at 30, and they're completely qualified, and the law firms are bloody desperate to keep them because it's really hard to find highly qualified people especially once you put all that time into training them especially if they're also good at bringing in business the law firms trip over themselves to try to keep them they can't the women think why in the world am I doing this? why in the world would anyone in their right mind do this? especially because they're often married by that point too and generally they've married a husband who makes as much money or more than them so they don't need the damn money and so they think well, there's more to life than this, which is exactly the right thing to think. And so then they go and find a job that's nine to five and controllable so that they can hire a nanny and have some kids and have a life. And it's like, yes, that's the intelligent thing to do. So we've got things backwards in our culture. We're thinking, at least in part, why aren't there more women in positions of power? Wrong question. The right question is, why are there any men at all who want those positions of power? Because it's not just positions of power. You have to be such a knothead to think that. Oh, it's a position of power. It's like, sure, but it's a position of overwhelming responsibility. And if you make mistakes, you're done. Right? It's not like you occupy that position of power and everyone does what they're told all the time and your life is easy. It's like, forget about that. People are on your case to do exactly the right thing all the time, 100% of the time. And maybe you want that, and maybe you don't. So the, what, I don't know what people think, is these people are all sitting in their offices with their like, feet up on the desk, smoking cigars and oppressing the world. It's like, that isn't how it works. Those people, they work flat out all the time. So, and it's fine if that's what you want, and some people are like that. They're hyper-industrious people, right, from a trait perspective. No matter where you put them, if you put them in a forest with an axe, they just wander around chopping down trees non-stop, right? Because it's built into them. But if you want to have a balanced life, and, and you should want that, you know, because the other thing you'll find, and this is 
God's gospel truth is that the older you get, if you have any sense at all, the more important your family is to you like that the, the utility of your career maybe that peaks around 35 or 40 and it starts to decline pretty rapidly after that and what happens if you're fortunate you have someone in your life that you love that you've woven yourself together with and you have some kids so that you have something to do from the time you're 50 till the time you're 80 and so it's a real mistake it's a barren future without children man I can tell you that it's a real mistake and so we do a terrible job of, of say putting that image forward and saying well yeah now you know because women have access to the birth control pill now and can compete in the same domains as men roughly speaking there is a real practical problem here it's partly an economic problem now because when I was roughly your age it was still possible for a one income family to exist well you know that wages have been flat except in the upper one percent since 1973 why? Well, it's easy. What happens when you double the labor force? What happens? You have the value of labor. So now we're in a situation where it takes two people to make as much as one did before. So we went from a situation where women's career opportunities were relatively limited to where they were relatively unlimited and there were two incomes to where, and so women could work, to a situation where women have to work and they only make half as much as they would have otherwise and now we're going to go into a situation this is the next step whereas women will work because men won't and that's what's coming now so we, there was an economics, e economist article showing that 50% now of, of boys in school are having trouble with their basic subjects and you look around you in universities you can see this happening now, I've watched it over decades I would say 90% of the people in my personality class are now women there won't be a damn man left in university in 10 years, except in the STEM fields. And it's a complete bloody catastrophe. And it's a catastrophe for women, because I don't know where the hell you're going to find someone to, to, have a, you know, to marry and have a family with, if this keeps happening. So, and you think when you're 19, because you're so clueless when you're 19, you don't know a bloody thing, you think, well, I'm not really sure I want children anyways. It's like, oh yeah, you can tell how well you've been educated. Jesus, dismal. Dismal.